I have Jacqueline Bethany here with me, who has two shorts in the festival here at the Mammoth Film Festival. We have Indigo Valley and The Last Birthday. Jacqueline, why the Romanov family for The Last Birthday? I'm, I, I've always been interested in Russian history and the Romanovs, and I wanted to make a film that was sort of a poetic, experimental exploration of their last days. So, And I filmed it in London, and it seemed like that seemed to me a better choice than trying to film it in California. <laughs> so, yeah, I have just had a like kind of lo- lifelong fascination with Russia and specifically the Romanovs. So that's why I decided to make it. Yeah, that's the thing is the Romanov family history is so interesting. I mean, and mostly immortalized by the Disney movie Anastasia. Do you believe in the Anastasia hype at all? I was inter- I was into it when I was little. Mm-hmm. I remember there was like a, a Lifetime movie and Christian Bale <laughs> yeah. was like Alexei. And oh, I remember yeah. watching that, like the mm-hmm. Anna Anderson story. Um, I was actually in my film more focused on the story of Maria and she actually was the body that they thought was missing. It was no, it, like somehow it got interpreted to Anastasia. So the film sort of focuses on more of Maria and I mean, I guess like going down the line past the film if she survived. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I don't know if I believe the Anastasia myth. I mean, I remember learning about it, but yeah. I don't know. It's not really historically accurate, I guess. Yeah, and that's the thing is, of course, it's a Disney movie. But yeah, there was always the talk about one of the girl's bodies was never found. So was she really alive? And I had never heard that Maria could have been the one instead of Anastasia. So yeah, where where were you able to find that information? That's so cool to me. I just read, we just, me and my co-writer like looked at a bunch of different books and sort of the age of Maria was also character wise something I could relate to because um, she was 19, 20, around the time that she died. And instead of telling a 16-year-old story, I felt closer to Maria's character. And I think just through research, we found out that. And also, Alexei's body was missing, the the younger brother. But they never could really determine, I guess, who officially it was. But most people determined it was Maria. And then this fictionalized version got, like, yeah. Anastasia, because she was the youngest princess. Yeah. And sort of the easiest thing to turn it into a Disney movie. Or it wasn't Disney, but animated yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's what's so interesting is you have all these like myths, you know, of course, in even modern times, there's myths and conspiracies. And that's something that really interests me. Is there another like conspiracy theory you'd love to make a movie about? I actually made right before the last birthday, I made a short. I'm a directing fellow at AFI. So we make three cycle films our first year. And my third short was about it was set during the Cold War, and it was about, this is based on a true story, but about a girl who wrote a letter to Yuri Andropov asking for peace, a 10-year-old girl, and she was flown over to Russia. Like, he responded to her letter, flew her and her parents over to Russia, gave her this tour of Russia, like, we're a peaceful country, like, we would never attack America, blah, 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 and then about a few months later, her parents and this girl died in a plane crash. So I just found that really interesting, and in, it was based on this novel called You Are One of Them, which is the story of Jennifer Jones, who historically is called Samantha Smith, and was from Maine, and like all of this really happened, but was kind of like pushed under in history for some reason. Like The only person that I knew who knew about it before was a friend of mine who was from Maine. So that was a, very, that was a super interesting topic for me as a filmmaker and I think as well like it fed into the last birthday because it's also said it's the Russian sort of like history which is like super crazy and interesting and why Russia because especially when now Russia is something that a lot of people are very curious about because of all the conspiracies with the Trump presidency and and Putin and all that and but this has obviously been a fascination your whole life so why Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a good reason. I've always been interested in, like, monarchy and sort of, you know, old empires and would read, like, a lot of books when I was little. And I think I liked that escape and, like, feeling that I could be a princess or whatever Mm -hmm. and, like, that it these stories were, like, a window into a different time. And I think going through girls' journeys that are, you know, we've come so far, but seeing it from, you know, Maria's perspective or Anastasia's perspective in this world where they were they were very constricted and they were under house arrest after they had like been given the world was super interesting to me. So well cool. And you have another film also in the festival, Indigo Valley, that is you actually star in as well. So you wear many hats. What's it like directing and acting? I'm I mean I started out as an actor, so I felt like I feel 
as if I got into directing through acting. And the people that I had worked with before on this project had worked with me on the first short that I directed that I was also in because I didn't know like what else to do. Because I was just like, it's easier if I act. I don't know. Um, so I was really, really grateful for their trust and their collaboration because it is, it is a, it's an interesting, it's a unique process. But I, I feel like in a way, because I wrote this character and I felt very connected to her, but I actually originally wasn't gonna do it. And then sort of my producer and my cinematographer encouraged me to do it. And so I was like, cool, yeah, I, yeah I'm yeah, i down. And I think it was a really, really, really challenging role. Probably the most challenging part I've ever played on top of acting and directing. But I think I was surrounded by a great team and like an amazing, cast and I think that kind of lifted my performance both as a director and an actor in this piece but I mean it, it's it's hard but in a way you're also it's it's just about having that relationship with your cinematographer and your AD and like you're all on the same page and as long as everyone's comfortable working that way like it all goes together there's no there's no difference you know what I mean yeah and this film is about three people on a journey through Iceland did you actually shoot in Iceland yep oh. we did um so we shot there for about a week and I had actually met my cinemat cinematographer the year before at the Reykjavik Film Festival and that's kind of when the idea for that film started. I thought it was like a perfect setting because it I feel like it's, it becomes sort of this other character in the story and this film is actually going to feature so I've been focusing a lot on like the landscape and like how it feeds this sort of psychological intense relationship story and so in a way it, it just made a lot of sense and it also reminds me I'm from Mississippi and in a weird way it reminds me of Mississippi because it's a very small country it's you know it's very influenced by the landscape it's very creative and Reykjavik is the same size as the town I grew up so there's this sense that everyone knows each other and everyone's kind of supportive of the arts and it's really fueled by this you know breathtaking otherworldly landscape and that's kind of in a different way what I experienced growing up so I could really relate to that. Yeah, and now that makes me intrigued because I also grew, I'm from the South as well. I'm from Tyler, Texas, which is a relatively large city, but it has, still has that small town sort of mm -hmm. feel. And that, that really intrigues me about the story of it, you know, it being part of the story, the city itself. And you see that so much in things like even like to the level of sex in the city. I mean, New York was the fifth character and people like that because all of us can relate to that on some level because we feel that way about our hometown. So where is your hometown in Mississippi? I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's the capital of Mississippi. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's cool. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, I've I haven't lived lived there for the past you know ten years. But it is where I'm from, and it does fuel a lot of my work. The next short that I'm making is set in Mississippi. So. Yeah, that's good, because I think, you know, what we learn in Orange County, because even though most of us, especially growing up in the South, where it's not at, we don't think it's creative, it's not the big city, it's not New York, it's not LA, we have this feeling of like, we want to leave, but then you get that sort of nostalgic feeling after you leave, and you learn to appreciate it, because you develop skills and develop something there that you don't always, you know, get in those places. Would you say that you feel the same way? I mean, yeah, yeah I think... It's taken me a long time to be able to feel comfortable telling a story about Mississippi because it does have such a kind of tragic and oh, crazy yeah. history. Um, but I think you're always tied to the place that you grew up and you always wanna defend it and kind of do it justice in a way, <laughs> even if a lot of bad things happen there. Um, and I think there's a way for me to do that as a filmmaker with this next project called The Delta Girl which is what I'm, what I'm aiming to do, so. Well, cool. Um, so yeah, the Delta Girl, are you also writing, directing, and acting, wearing all the hats there too? No, I'm not in yeah. it, but we've got a great cast. Um, so it's my American Film Institute mm -hmm. thesis film, and the leads are Isabel Furman and Caitlin Carver and Ashley Bell. So we've got, I'm like totally confident that those ladies can, I didn't, I, I don't know if I, if maybe if it goes to series or, or something, I would, love to be in it but in this phase of it I'm just directing to grad to to make a great film and graduate from AFI so yeah well cool so what is your favorite hat to wear director writer actor yeah I've, I've been getting this question a lot and I don't I don't want to answer it oh, okay. because I think I don't think you have to choose I think there's 
you know, there's this sort of conception that's been going on for like, you know, the past 50 years or ever since filmmaking started and that women can only, like people want to kind of brand me as an actress or brand me as a director because it's in to be a female director now or whatever. But I think I don't feel, I feel like they all have kind of, that there's this hybrid and I'm never stopping myself from doing one or the other. And I have people that like believe in me in all, all the areas. I, I'm, I think, you know, I, I, it's great that I found my voice through directing and I think that feeds my acting. I think my writing feeds my a- acting as well because I'm able to, and for the other actors, as an actor, I understand what people are looking for in parts and like how to kind of bring it from the script to, to, the, to the camera, so. Yeah. yeah, and too, I mean, Salma Hayek has done it as well. I mean, that's the thing, is women can do all the things as well. It's not just Eli Roth or Quentin Tarantino. And I'm glad that you're finally getting an opportunity to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's ultimately been my goal, is to be this sort of multi-hyphenate and have my first feature as an actor, direct, writer, director. And that, But that does not mean that I want to be in every single <laughs> yeah. thing that I do, you know? And I hope that, you know, this can also... I've done a lot of other acting and other shorts and plays and theater and stuff. So I'm hoping that, you know, with this film, I'll be able to work in other people's stuff too, as an actor and writer. Well, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, those two guys, I mean, Quentin Tarantino gave Eli Roth the part in Inglorious Bastards. So as I say, there's a precedent for that. And that's what's great. And two, they probably trust you more because you've been in their shoes, right? Yeah. I think so. I mean, I'm able to talk to them, and I, I hope I'm able to talk to my actors in a way that it's, you know, there's not going to be tons of questions on set because we've talked about it and sort of have made sort of that, even even though I'm the director, but it is like an actor-to-actor relationship, you know, because I do know what they're going through, and I do know what how I would do it in a way, but I don't, you know, I don't want to take the performance away from them. So I think it's a fine line between finding yourself as a, having this acting background and being able to translate that without stepping on that person's particular vision for the role as well. Yeah, and that's always, you know, what this industry is. Don't step on anybody's toes. But you've got a lot of projects coming up. So we have the two in the festival, Indigo Valley, the last birthday, and then, of course, the Delta Girls you mentioned. Is there anything else you'd like to let us know about? Mm-hmm. I'm So Indigo Valley is in development as a feature. And um, we're planning to shoot in late summer in back in Iceland, and we have cast one of the roles, who's Ivana Lynch from Harry Potter. Oh, so yeah. she's going to be playing my sister, and we're still like you know putting feelers out there. And it's a, it's a small cast, but it I'm really excited about it, and I hope that all of the work that I make post these screenings comes out you know with the intention that I want as a filmmaker, and it can, they can get seen. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you.